Are you looking for a program that your child may be interested in, specifically your sons or nephews that you may know? You won't want to miss this next edition of Public Report. TCT presents Public Report, a look at the issues and events of importance to our viewing area. Now, here is your host. Hello, and thank you for tuning in to today's segment of Public Report. I am your host, Shannon Battle, and today is going to be a wonderful, good use of your time. I have with me Mike Anderson from Polish Souls Foundation Incorporated. Thank you for coming, Mike. Thank you so much for having me, Shannon. Yes, um, it's, it's just a pleasure to have you here because I have an excitement and a thrill when I read your information about your foundation. That is really a, a core part of what drives me as an individual helping youth. And I want to be able to engage our listeners with you so they can get all of the information so they can know where, you know, that there are programs that exist. So with uh, Polish Foundation, Polish Souls Foundation, tell me how it began and what does it do? Well, first and foremost, Polish Souls Foundation Incorporated is based upon my life story. I have this saying that every diamond in the rough is a soul that deserves to be polished. And the reason why is because at that one time, I was a diamond in the rough. I actually uh, received a life sentence in 1991. Uh, I served 17 years on that life sentence in the North Carolina Department of Corrections and the parole board decided to give me another chance and released me on Mother's Day in 2008. Um, since I've been home, I decided to take Polish Souls into the community because I feel as if some of these young males out here that are adjudicated, specifically adjudicated youth, those that have encountered the system as juveniles, they need some type of direction. They need some type of guidance. They need to hear the voice that has experienced it versus the scholars. And the reason why I say that is because I feel as if at one time when I was a youth, when I was a teenager, if I would have encountered that voice, it would have been something that would have been able to click with inside of me and tell me, go a different direction because you're headed down the wrong path. And what we do with Polished Souls is we take the arts, whether it be poetry, uh, filming, theater, okay. or anything dealing with the literary arts as well, performing arts and visual arts, we take that and we create a outlet for these youth to be involved with it so they can identify their gifts and find an alternative the way out of the uh, area of being a troubled youth. So out of all the platforms you could have selected, what made you go into the film, music, arts industry? Because I, a lot of people don't realize, see there's this big diagnosis out there nowadays called ADD. And I feel like that ADD sometimes is an excuse to explain that a person or a young uh, person is not sequential learner, meaning that uh, they are not interested in the overall curriculum in school. You know, to me, arts has always been an opportunity for somebody to develop outside of the common thinking right. brain realm. And I feel as if the arts itself can hone a talent, it can hone a gift and open up a myriad of doors within the mind itself and teach this youth how to use alternative learning, alternative skills outside of just being a sequential learner. Right, and with show, social media outlets today, most of today's youth, you know, they're they're watching video. Exactly. You know, they're, exactly. So they're into the film part. Exactly. Uh, most of them are playing games, so they're into the arts and the video. Definitely. Energy and, exactly. You know, the creative aspects. So, do you find that many youth really have more artistic? creative types of thinking? I do, I do, and the reason why is because, believe it or not, art is a form of expression. And one of the things that we don't allow in the community of the youth is for them to express themselves, you know, wholeheartedly and truthfully. And art is an outlet that they can get away with expressing themselves without somebody, you know, admonishing them for a wrong thought. You know, as imperfect youth, as, as imperfect people, period, even if we're adults 40 years old or 50 years old, we are imperfect. And sometimes our thoughts need development mm -hmm. 
through a certain structure versus a sequentialism that is going to take you in a direction that can sometimes be boring. Yes, true indeed, I'm going to learn this and this, but do I use it further down the road? However, if I am artistic and I identify with my gifts, there's so many different ways that if, if you're a poet, you don't just have to be a poet, you know, in a sense of just doing poetry. You could write a book. You can become a spoken word performer. You could even become the poet in residence for some type of theater company. Wow. So, you know, a lot of them of what they see, it doesn't seem like it's attainable because, you know, it's, it's Hollywood that's being highlighted. It's, it's New York that's being highlighted. And so when you're in smaller communities, not near those areas, that just seems like a, a, a cloud, you know, that doesn't become reality for yeah, kids. Yeah, it's so weird that you say cloud because, you know, sometimes cloud can block things. We know that when clouds come into the atmosphere, it blocks the sun. Whenever it blocks the sun, you don't see the, the, the typical sun rays. Mm -hmm. So you don't see the whole overall picture. And in the grand scheme of things, what we have to think about is that it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's upon us to take on that task and pull them closer to that dream that doesn't seem attainable, to pull them closer to that objective or that goal to show them that you can do this. Right. And so with the youth that you're working with, um, how many youth are in your program now? Currently, I have a group, uh, it's a six-week program that I'm doing called SKIT. And SKIT is an acronym for Spreading Knowledge in Theater. So what I'm doing with, uh, they're adjudicated and they're at an alternative high school in Durham, North Carolina. Um, I'm working with these guys and it's probably about a group of 25 to 30 of them right now. Wow. You know, it changes because sometimes they get suspended from school. Uh, I just started the program uh, probably about two weeks ago. Okay. But already, already getting a great response from these, these, these guys. They're, they're very receptive and they're engaging in something that the teachers at that school itself cannot believe that, that they're engaging in. They're like, you know, I see a totally different personality than what I see in my classroom. And I I guess part of it is the relevance because a lot of them are adjudicated, meaning that they've encountered the system in some type of way. They have charges or even they may be on probation for some type of juvenile offense. And so as they, they come into the classroom and they, they find a guy, an instructor that is relative to their life or people that they grew up around or things that they've, they've actually witnessed in their environment. So they're like, okay, so this guy has been there. And he's able to bring this, this different type of curriculum into the school and care about how we feel about it. So it's like looking into the mirror. Exactly. The, the man in the mirror. Yeah, the man you know. in the, that's the older man in the <laughs> yeah, mirror. Yeah, exactly. Got some and exactly. They're, they're there. <laughs> yeah, but when I look at his history, his history tells my present story. Exactly. And so I guess you can, you know, in essence, use, you know, your life as a storyline of, you know, what happens and that that's still not the end of your story. Exactly, exactly. You're never afraid to overcome by the words of my testimony because I think it's those exact words that may be, you know, you never know. This child may not have never ever been introduced to any type of literary work outside of what he's hearing come out my mouth. So he may have been bounded and confined to his environment mm -hmm. only to know that now he's about to be exposed to something broader. Right. Yeah. So with the kids that you're working with now, are these just kids specific to that school or does Polish Souls uh, Foundation deal with a, a, a wide variety of kids? Yeah, that's just one project to mention. Okay. I, yeah. We're, our goal is to always deal with as many as youth possible. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we actually attempt to do is also uh, travel. Like I myself, I'm, I'm probably, you know, we have a small staff now. Mm -hmm. So uh, outside of myself, I'm the one, I, I love to go into camps. I love to go into work and do workshops and facilitate workshops anywhere. Um, I try to represent uh, on, a, on, a, on a broad basis because I know that right there in my community, those are not the only adjudicated youth that exist. Mm -hmm. You know, I try to go outside of the community and, and have an impact and to give people the opportunity to realize that this may be an alternative way of bringing your youth mm -hmm. out of that mindset of going down the wrong, wrong path. Mm -hmm. So I try to go anywhere. Yeah, so what is the mindset? What, what do you see as the typical mindset of an adjudicated youth that you're working with? The typical mindset uh, in relevance to what I've experienced mm -hmm. is there's something that has triggered a certain uh, level of rage or a certain level of resentment or a certain level of self-pity. You know, that child, he or she maybe, will always have a tendency to think, you know what, I've had it hard. 
I've had it hard, so this is the way that I'm going to respond to it. This is the way I'm going to process it. So they process it in a way that they feel as if they become a rebel. When they become that rebel, they go outside of that mindset, what is you know, typically made up for them to say, well, this is what you should do. This is how you obtain success. Well, if success is out of my reach because of what I've gone through in life, then I don't need to be trying to obtain success right now. I need to live in the here and the now. That's how a lot of them think. They feel as if it's a survival game and it's always taught to them in their immediate environment that this is how you go get it. Mm -hmm. This is how you survive. And so that mindset is being taught to them until a different mindset comes along and retrains them. Right, and get them to have another way of thinking about things. And when I look at rages, rages are, are it's not associated, it's associated with anger, but it's not anger. Rages are more of those untamed responses exactly. to anger. So when you were talking about, you know, it, it was things that, you know, tempered those the rages and then you know to cultivate into them becoming a rebel that is where it stems from so when you have someone that is angry how do you even how do you approach a child like that to where they can even receive you well one thing I remember is uh, part of my lifestyle stemmed from anger when I was young so I can definitely relate to that in a sense that my father was very abusive in our household we had a very dysfunctional household and one of the things that I always think about is was there some type of thought was there some type of calming or encouraging word that could have came across to me and triggered a thought and said you know what this anger is not necessary so when I encounter these 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 kids when I encounter these children these young men I always tell them or ask them what are you angry about? So if I, because I know there's some type of anger there, I can sense it and I can feel it. And once they tell me what they're angry about, then we address it. Well, here's the alternative way to that. You don't have to be angry anymore because it wasn't your fault. Mm -hmm. A lot of them don't realize that they come into the world faultless. Mm -hmm. So the fault, they, but they have a tendency to own the fault. And it may not have nothing to do with them as the child that they are. Their innocence is tainted by the fact that they have a tendency to either the, the fault is projected onto them mm -hmm. by the community or by the parents, or they have a tendency to own the fault. Okay. And then a lot of kids, I guess they're trapped into the actions of what they've done. And um, healthy communication is really hard when, you, when you're with a parent that has high expectations. Exactly. And, and, you've, and they make you, they kind of like manipulate it when they don't know how to approach you with it because they've been hurt so they'll you know tell you things as though you know oh you know how could you do this to me and you know just put a weight and burden on them and it's hard really for that child to be pulled up out of that you're right, I guess, you're until right. they meet you know someone as yourself yeah and and what I always try to do is present the fact that the worst the worst that you can ever possibly imagine can sometimes happen but you can still come away from that you know nobody would have ever expected that I would have been in a position where I was facing the death penalty plus life plus 60 years but I was in that position mm -hmm. I had to take a plea bargain for life but once I took a, a plea bargain for life to me it wasn't over because I knew there was plans for my life mm -hmm. and so I had to equip myself while I was in my fall during my fall I had to equip myself and make sure that I came up out of my fall and was able to dust myself off and say okay now it's time for me to be used for something else outside of what I've already been used for destruction now it's time for me to be used for building and to build up a community mm -hmm. so as a result of polishing the souls of these adjudicated youth what outcomes are you hoping to to see a result happen one of the things that I'm into is planting seeds to create a harvest and what I mean by that is that if I can just take a few of these guys and create leaders out of them, then they can become leaders in their immediate community and they can get others to follow. Mm -hmm. So Polished Soul is by the end of the program or by the end of the time that you have encountered Polished Souls, your soul will have been polished enough that your shine. One of our, one of our uh, pieces of our creed says, I am a diamond in the rough. My goal is to shine bright like a diamond. Mm -hmm. So when you shine with that magnitude, you should be able to allure and appeal to the masses in your immediate community amongst your peers mm -hmm. and ask them or even uh, convince them and influence them that they need to follow you, follow your ways of great decisions, great choice making and going somewhere. So in, 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 in regarding what you just said, 
do all youth have the capacity to be leaders that you're working with or do you find that some of them you know they struggle with being the one that's a leader because I've been taught sometimes you know in order to be a great leader you have to be a great, great follower. follower exactly so for a child you know that's still trying to navigate their way their way through life and figure out okay I don't even know how I fit in the scheme of this thing here, uh -huh. you know, and my mind is just now developing and it's into abstract terms and I no longer see things as black and white anymore. Now I can see a little bit of shades of gray. Exactly. So when with with the kids in that level of thinking, how do you develop them into leaders or, or should they be developed all developed into leaders? Definitely not. And the, the key thing you said in order to be a, a good leader, you have to be a good follower. Mm -hmm. I do my best to make sure they're a good follower during the program and then allow them to have the uh, opportunity to sometimes lead the group. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you train them up with leadership skills, still allowing them to be great followers and to follow, you know, a, great, a greater cause outside of whatever their immediate environment has induced within their lives to, be, to uh, put them in a position where they are adjudicated. Mm -hmm. I give them the opportunity to see, well, here's our alternative decision to make and to continue to be a follower for a greater cause. And the more that you follow the greater cause, the more you have the opportunity to learn how to be that leader. And when that time comes, when it's time for you to raise up and become that leader, you have already been equipped to a certain extent and the rest is just learning. So what happens with the, because when you're dealing with adjudicated offenders, um, not all of them come from broken homes. And, not you know, that's, that's a false assumption. Exactly. And in terms of brokenness, a lot of times we look at it as socioeconomic status. You exactly. Know, whether you're in the projects, you know, or whether you're in the suburbs. But they're all, you know, potential pe kids that could be subject to just uh, deviant types of behaviors. So when you're working with them, what happens when they go back to the broken home? Well, one of the things that we always try to uh, attempt to do is also teach coping skills, to present coping mechanisms. Something, you know, that if you are trying to survive, survive with a positive mindset. Go in not thinking that it's your fault. Go in to your household not with shame, but with courage and confidence that, hey, if it's like this now, someday it's not gonna be like this all the time. I have to overcome this environment while I'm here. It's a struggle, it's a current struggle. And for some reason, God has chosen me to be in this current struggle for the purpose of learning how to become the stronger person, the stronger person for my future cause. And when, whenever you get them to think in that way, whenever you plant that seed of thought into them, it gives them a different perspective. They're no longer saying, well, hold up, I'm in this broken home, so uh, it's bad, it's all right. bad. I gotta, you know what I'm saying, right. do my thing and go get it. They start thinking, well, hold up, it is a broken home, mm -hmm. but how can I overcome this broken home? Right. And, and, and they think immediately, what did Mr. Anderson tell me? Or what did whoever, teacher such and such from Polished Souls tell me? And that gives them the opportunity to have a different perspective now. So now you got no longer just one-sided perspectives, but you got another perspective. Kind of like when you had that angel and that devil on your shoulders. You got that angel sitting there, you know, and constantly going at it with that devil mm -hmm. and telling him, yo, you ain't got no right. wings over this, you right. know. So, yeah. And then what I see now, too, uh, just looking at the illustration, really, of what you've dealt with, say you do got the angel, and that's like your parents, you know, exactly. things that they've told you, people like you. And then you have the devil, that's the friends and everything. But then now they have all these other things that are just scattered all around them, and it's the music, it's the television, you know. It's just so many other things that are going on with them. And it's like, how do you, how do you balance the weight of all of the negative uh, things that are being inputted into your thoughts and in, in, in what you see, um, what you hear with the little angel right there. Well, one of the things that we do during the workshops and during the classes is that we, uh, we actually dissect lyrics from the current trend of music, whether it be hip hop, rock and roll or whatever. We always have a tendency, mainly with hip hop, because we know a lot of negativity is actually being nurtured, so to speak, in hip hop music. And what we do, we, we, we create this opportunity for us to dissect the lyrics. We bring certain lyrics out. We create the, ra the, uh, the false sense of rationality with it versus the reality of it. So we get them to rationalize these lyrics. 
And once they have a tendency to start thinking a little bit more clearer, so to speak, on what the rationale is behind these lyrics, mm -hmm. is it entertainment mm -hmm. or is it real life? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I often find it, <laughs> it's, it's so funny how one rap artist or one music artist, period, can go into a song, sell 30 kilograms of cocaine, mm -hmm. and catch uh, multiple amounts of charges, mm -hmm. but they're not doing a day of time yet. They're still sitting here <laughs> presenting this music to you. Right. right. And so I, I get them to see that rationale, and they start thinking like, okay, so what is so-and-so saying right. to me? What is this rap artist saying to me? You're right. He's not in prison yet, but he's done all this in this one rap song. Right. But it's like watching wrestling. You don't know when you're younger that it's, you know, real or fake. You know, you're thinking it's the real thing. Exactly. You know, until you get a little bit older and you're like, that wasn't real. <laughs> or somebody older comes into the room and be like, boy, that's fake. You know right. what I'm saying? Oh, well, girl, what, what you looking at? You right. know, the, the, what they really do is this. And, the, you know, when somebody presents it to them, mm -hmm. then they start thinking. Because a young mind can process mm -hmm. greater thoughts. It right. can. And, you know, we, uh, you know, a lot of people have, have, have uh, actually been successful at a young age. Mm -hmm. You know, the child prodigies, we got to think about them. I feel like a child prodigy exists in every one of our children. We just have to hone it. We have to find it. We have to give them the opportunity to search and explore that child prodigy state of mind. They won't get the headphones out their ears long enough for uh, us to help them. I know, I know. You're in the car. They have headphones on. You're in your house. They're going through phones. And it's yeah. like, how do I get to that creative side? You know, how do I polish really what my child was equipped? To do. I blame that on us a lot as parents sometimes. And when I say us, I mean us as in the whole because mm -hmm. I know the majority of parents sometimes when they're trying to get their tasks done at hand or they're trying to accomplish something, they want to distract that child so that child won't be their distraction. They'll throw those headphones on. They'll throw that DVD yeah. player in front of them. And then it becomes habit. Mm -hmm. And you know, us as creatures of habit, when we take on these things, it's hard to break those habits. Yeah. So we have to kind of like, we have to start from when they're little bitty, bitty, bitty children. Right. <laughs> so, and and rear, rear them in a way that we have to look ahead. We have to think ahead. We have to look at the grand scheme of things and say, in the bigger picture, do I want this habit to even exist mm -hmm. with my child or with our children? Because we know it takes a village to raise a child. Yes, I honestly believe it takes two villages to raise an adjudicated child. Wow. So, you know, um, we have to come together and we have to show them that we're here together. Mm -hmm. we, all, we often approach these children segregated. And what I mean by that is, we're separated ourselves sometimes, mm -hmm. so how can we teach a unity, you know, uh, from a standpoint of a society that is in disunity sometimes? Yeah, that is a challenge. A lot of parents feel like they're on their own. I mean, we don't, we don't have common fellowship like we used to. I know. You know. A lot of that has changed, so it's really the community sense of everyone helping each other that's really been diluted. Yeah. And so now here it is, we have to wait and anticipate programs like yours and hopefully it's just not too late you know for exactly. you know those particular children yeah. so with skit what is the next plan for polished souls because skit ends when skit ends in june which is okay. actually the graduation term for the actual school but skit is not going to end as a program period okay. um there's several different programs that polished souls offer that deals with the uh actual arts. One of them is Poetry in Emotion. That's a, a six-week workshop where we teach the uh, youth how to write poetry based on their emotions and expressions. Mm -hmm. And it's a play on words because what happens is at the end of the program, all the poems that they've written, all the poems that they composed becomes an actual published book. Mm -hmm. So it gives them the opportunity mm -hmm. to see an achievement you know, not only do yeah. we give them the workshop, but we show them a final product. Right. What they've accomplished with this workshop, what they've accomplished by digging into themselves yeah. and learning how to express themselves emotionally yeah. through poetry. Where people can hear them. Exactly. Or people can hear them. With skit, we're going to film the whole, every skit that we're putting together, which is a, it's based on different scenes. And in each scene, these children are faced by challenges. And one has to be the angel, one has to be the devil. <laughs> I would love to see that. <laughs> and the final product is going to be a whole film put together, a whole okay. DVD compilation of these skits filmed. Okay. And they get to see, you know, uh, possibly we get to uh, air it on a network 
which has been in the works as well. Okay. So they get to see their accomplishments. They get to go on Facebook instead of saying, look at me with this gun in my hand, mm -hmm. you know, inappropriate social postings. They get to go on there now and say, check me out on channel such and such. Mm -hmm because I'm going to be on there doing right. skit for Polished Souls. Right. And there's an achievement. And guess what? What they thought was unattainable, as we spoke about earlier, is now attainable. Right. You're not seeing me on, on the latest breaking news with handcuffs. Exactly. Or in, yeah, uh, you know, Slammer me, Magazine yeah, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, legitimately. Yeah. So what does Polished Souls need in order to continue? I know it's a foundation. Are you 501c3? I'm definitely 501c3, okay. nonprofit. So, uh, of course, funding is always a big thing. Um, a lot of stuff that I've done in the past, I've existed as Polish Soul Ministries since 2009, roughly, but now we're officially 501c3 since September 2012. And one of the biggest challenges that we face is funding. And a lot of people in the community don't even know that, you know, just like when people ask you to give, it doesn't even take a lot. Sometimes you can come together collectively. $5 comes from here, $10 comes from here or whatever. You know, funding is not always saying, hey, write me a big check. Mm -hmm. You know, if you know about this foundation, if you know about this organization and you know what's going on, mm -hmm. be willing to come together collectively and say, okay, I'll donate a quick $5. It's, right. ta it's, it's a tax write-off. Of course, it's tax deductible. However, the bigger return on investment is through the youth that are involved with this program. Yes. And we go in hands on. I mean, we got several things coming up. We got a major camp in Fayetteville, North Carolina coming up where I'm partnering with Project Second Chance. Um, we got a major uh, um, uh, studio thing that we're doing dealing with uh, Polished Souls where we're going to create more films. Okay. And we got some <laughs> award show coming up where we're uh, actually incorporating the youth, allowing them to become a part of it, uh, the Bull City Music Awards in Durham. There's so many things that we're doing that we're giving them attainable projects to look at. Right. So funding is one of the biggest things, and that can be done on the website of Polished Souls itself. Okay, so give, the, give us all your information. How do we connect with Polished Souls? Well, all the information that you need is on polishedsouls.com. That's www.polishedsouls.com. And everything you ever need to know over, I mean, uh, in a brief synopsis, along with what it is that you can do to help Polish Souls is right there on the website. Okay. Are, are your events listed on there also? The events are particularly not listed only because I have this tendency to kind of like create a sense of con confidentiality mm -hmm. like you never know what type of trouble these children are in right right and i don't want to put understand. them at risk I so <laughs> I, I completely understand well is there a final message that you want to leave our uh, viewers i definitely do i want to tell you that if you know of any children any youth that are actually involved with criminal activities don't speak at them don't yell at them. Give them an opportunity to know that they have alternative ways that they can definitely express themselves. They have alternative ways in which they can choose to put them on a better path. Because had I had that opportunity for somebody to come across my path, I probably wouldn't gone through what I went through. However, I did, and I'm here to make sure that it doesn't happen for other children. And with that being said, thank you for tuning in to this edition of Public Report. I am your host, Shannon Battle, and you have a wonderful, wonderful day. This has been Public Report. Public Report discusses the issues of interest and importance to our viewing area. Please remember that the views expressed by our guests are their own and do not necessarily represent the views of TCT or the station.